Yer, what's good class? It's your boy, the Black Mesa Doji. Welcome to another episode of Honest Gaming History. This series I'll come out more often now since the Rona took our job. Bro, you dead ass. What? We gotta be completely honest with the fam. Yeah, but you didn't have to start the video like that. <sighs> I feel like you did this to piss me off. Huh? Me? Piss you off? I'm your conscience, why would I? Yeah, 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 screw your sarcasm. Anyways, today we're covering the spiky haired pretty boy swordsman who inspired the other spiky haired pretty boy swordsman. This guy is a shonen protagonist and a half, riding his way to soldier first class with a big ass sword and a smile on his face. As a part of a two-parter requested by you guys, we are covering Zack Fair, someone who has become one of my favorite characters from the Final Fantasy franchise. Play that intro, son. Zack's story begins with the Shinra Electric Power Company. Originally a weapons manufacturer, Shinra found a way to take the planet's livestream and convert it into energy known as Mako. In its rise to power, Shinra continued using Mako to provide energy to the city of Midgar, building multiple Mako reactors around the region to generate Mako. This turned Midgar into a steampunk dystopia where a lot of its residents lived in poverty. But we'll get into how fucked Shinra is later. So Shinra became an industrial powerhouse, but they couldn't get this far without some kind of brute force, which is why they had the soldier program, their own personal army. Like our friends over at the Fire Nation, Shinra wants to spread their way of life all over the planet. So they decided to extend their reach outside of Midgar, specifically to another nation called Wutai. However, Wutai ain't about that life. So like the Fire Nation, Shinra pulled the most aggressive move they could and waged war against Wutai. So fucking aggressive, Shinra, Jesus. Because of Shinra's strength and the propaganda spread by the news station, all the kids around the world dream of joining Soldier one day, including the subject of today's lecture, Zack. Zack Fair was born in the hood of Gungaga. However, his dream of joining Soldier and becoming a hero led him to leave home at a young age. He joined the program and worked his way up the Soldier food chain. Under the tutelage of his edgelord sensei and Soldier first class and Geo, he learned the art of combat and moved up to Soldier second class. However, things are currently not going too well. Apparently, multiple people have deserted the program, one being a missing Soldier first class by the name of Genesis. On top of that, there is also the war in Wutai that has been going on for a minute. Regardless, Zack is still focused on doing his job and becoming a hero, and his determination pays off when Njil recommends that he get promoted to Soldier first class. However, to get promoted, he must prove himself. The director of Soldier, Lazard, sends him to Wutai as a final test before his promotion. Zack is hype about this opportunity. It's like he's officially graduating from the Academy of Hansology and moving on to Advanced Hansology. Can we please not bring back that Hansology shit? What? The people love that shit. No, it's cringe as fuck. Bruh, yo fam, tell this dumbass that Hansology is that vintage dochi shit. Nah fam, tell this dumbass that Hansology is dead and needs to stay dead. Anyways, Njil joins him on the mission to Wutai. On the way, Njil talks about his past, specifically referring to a rich friend he had during his childhood. This rich friend being the missing soldier Genesis. Oh, there goes that name again. That's how you know he's important. So once they get to their target, Njil prays to the anime sensei gods for guidance, and Zack flips into action. Zack runs into Yuffie for Final Fantasy VII, because fun fact, she's from Wutai, that single-handedly mops the floor with every enemy in his way. Until he gets caught slipping. But luckily, Njil saves him with that kick-ass buster sword. Once the mission's over, they head over to Lazard, but on the way, a bunch of odd-looking soldiers separate them. As Zack tries to find Angeal, Ifrit gets summoned and attacks a soldier. He almost takes it down on his own, but it gets back up and once again, Zack gets caught slipping. Luckily, the soldier first class and edge god himself, Sephiroth, saves the kid. You're not doing a good job at proving that you're first class material right now, Zack. After Sephiroth shows off his Ma Long sword, he and Zack figure out that the all-looking soldiers are called to the missing soldier first class Genesis. Zack is confused as shit that Sephiroth aggressively acts where Angeal is, but Zack is trying to figure out where he went too. So Sephiroth just kind of deduces that Angeal's betrayed soldier. That's a bold ass assumption, sir. Zack's like, no, nah, not Angeal. Not my boy Angeal. Angeal's a true shonen sensei. He would never betray his comrades. But Sephiroth looks at him all broodingly. So Zack heads back to the base to do some soldier squads and cool down. Lazard calls him into his office and Zack immediately asks about where Angeal might be. But Lazard unfortunately has no idea. Instead of delving deeper into the matter, Lazard disregards how troubled Zack is about his missing sensei. This is him on a mission to find the missing soldier Genesis. Lazard also instructs the Turk Sung to accompany him, probably to make sure Zack doesn't go deserting Soldier 2. Then they head to Genesis' hometown of Benora. So the Turks are like the FBI, but for Shinra. They are a bunch of elite spies to do a wide variety of tasks with the Electric Company. This includes assassinations, internal and external investigations, and scouting out for potential soldier members. The Turks are an odd bunch of characters because as you'll see as the story progresses, they're not really evil. They're just a bunch of guys who work for an evil ass company like Shinra. They're more like anti-heroes who serve Shinra, but still hold on to their ideals regardless of all the crazy stuff Shinra tells them to do. 
So the soldier and the Turk make it to Benora, but after Zack deals with more Genesis clones, Sung explains that the technology used to clone Genesis was stolen from Shinra scientists. Somehow, whoever is behind this found a way to implant Genesis' traits into soldiers and monsters. After doing more investigating, Zack and Sung find Genesis' adopted parents' grave. Well, that's no help. So Sung instructs Zack to find Angeal's parents. Luckily, he finds his mother. She explains that Genesis came to Benora a while ago and killed mad people. And Angeal came home too and left his buster sword, hoping that his mother reveals to be a representation of the family's honor. With that info, he reconvenes with Sung and asks him for more time. If he has time to find Angeal, he could talk to him and possibly get him to rejoin Soldier. See, this is why Zack is cool. He about the smoke, but at the end of the day, he just wants to be a good person and help his friends. Sung then talks about how Sephiroth refused his mission because Angeal and Genesis were his only friends. I'm surprised an edgelord like that even had as friends. Zack and Sung eventually run into Genesis, and the guy pretty much admits to killing a bunch of members of Soldier and his family. What the fuck, bro? But according to Genesis, his parents betrayed him, then in anger he attacks Sung. Then Sensei Angeal returns to protect Zack from Genesis. Genesis leaves, then when Zack tries to talk to Angeal, the dude pushes him away. Angeal leaves, but Zack is sick of the games, so he follows him. He gets to Angeal's old house, and he finds his mom, dead. Nigga what? Then he turns around and guess who it is? And fucking Jill. Nigga, what? Zack immediately assumes that Angeal killed his own mother and punches him in the face. What the fuck, bro? You were talking all this shit about honor and dreams a second ago, then you kill your mom? Who does that? Wait, wait, before we get all crazy about Angeal killing his mom and shit, let's go back to the crime scene for a sec. Look at Angeal's mom. There's no blood on the floor. She hasn't been cut anywhere. And look at Angeal's buster sword. For one, the mom said it was like a family heirloom or something, and Angeal treasured the thing. So he would use it to kill somebody innocent. And where's the blood, bro? So, ladies and gentlemen, this wasn't a murder. This was a suicide. We'll get into why she did it later, though. And Jill does nothing to ease Zack's suspicions and just leaves. Then Genesis shows up and summons Bahamut to attack Zack. After Zack beats the thing, he scolds Genesis for using a summon all recklessly like that. Then he questions his belief in honor and dreams. Then Genesis retorts by stating that he and Angeal are monsters, then randomly sprouts a black wing. According to Genesis, monsters have neither dreams nor honor. Then he dips. And Zack just kind of gets mesmerized by the amount of edge he just saw. I mean, first Angeal made it look like he killed his mom. Now Genesis is over here like, I'm a monster. Monsters don't get to have honor or dreams. I get it, Zack. It's a lot. Then as Zack and Sung leave Benora, Shinra pulls an umbrella and blows up the whole place to cover up all the incidents that went down over there. Can't have people finding out that Soldier isn't what it seems. Sometime after that, Zack gets called into Lazard's office by the one and only Sephiroth. Lazard has good news for him, as of this moment he is now Soldier First Class. But Zack isn't as excited as he thought he'd be. Lazard then gets to the point and says that Shinra is ready to handle this whole Genesis problem. But by handle, they mean killing both Genesis and whoever is working with them, which includes Angeal. Shinra doesn't trust Zack to get the job done because of his friendship with Angeal, so he's getting partnered with Sephiroth. But before they're able to talk more about the mission, Genesis clones begin attacking Midgar. Zack fights the clones and runs into Song, accompanied by three other Turks, Reno, Rude, and Cisne. Later, Sephiroth tells Zack to meet him at the Mako Reactor in Sector 5 of Midgar. And Jill has been spotted, but Sephiroth wants to get there before the Shinra army does, so they can fail to eliminate them. Showing Zack that Sephiroth is also down for talking things out to save a friend. But when they unite at the Mako Reactor, they find Dead and Jill clones. That's not good. Then Sephiroth tells Zack about how him and Jill and Genesis used to go to the training room together and just duke it out. Like we're talking full on flashy sword epic anime type shit. And Zack's like, oh fuck, that sounds lit! Nah, he's still confused about all the wah shit going on. So they continue making their way through the Mako reactor and eventually find info about something called Project G. Okay, so here's where Final Fantasy turns into Marvel. Project G was a part of a series of experiments done by Shinra to create the ultimate life form. Genesis is a product of this project. And currently, Sephiroth believes that the G stands for Genesis, but it doesn't. Now I'd love to tell you more about this project, what the G stands for, and everything being done in these experiments, cause trust me, this shit's fucked up, but I don't wanna spoil the rest of the video for you. So just hang tight, people. Everything will be explained in a bit. Immediately after they find the Project G info, they run into Dr. Hollander, the person responsible for Project G. Sephiroth appears to body him, but then Genesis shows up to protect the doctor. So Sephiroth sends Zack after the guy while he takes care of Genesis, and then Jill shows up to save the doctor's ass a second time. Zack asks his old master what he's after, and I guess because the guy's apparently a monster now, the edge has reached his full potential. He hits Zack with, all I want is world domination and vengeance, cause I'm a monster, that's what monsters want. Then he tries to fight his poor confused student, but Zack won't fight him back, because he's a good guy. So Angeal uses Earthquake, thus breaking the platform Zack is on and sending him to the slums. He wakes up in a church, where he's welcomed by the flower girl Aerith. He thanks her for saving him even though she admits that she didn't really do anything, but asks her on a date. But Zack, Aren't you on a mission right now? Are we not gonna talk about how Sephiroth is still up there alone with both Genesis and Angeal? Man, you know all these characters are low-key on the quest for Cheeks. I like you, and I want you. So Zack and Aerith get to talking, and they actually kind of vibe. Then they go on a kind of sort of date. 
Quest for Cheeks kind of sort of complete. On the day, he buys her a ribbon that she promises to wear forever. Then they chill at the park and vibe even more. Zach, this is cute and all, but that mission though. Their day gets cut short when Zach gets called back to the Shinra building. Genesis is attacking. So Zach runs back to base, but Ajil stops him on the way, asking for Zach's help in his battle against all who create suffering. That's actually what he says. As odd as this looks, Zach agrees to help his old master. Then they fly to the Shinra building. They convene with Sephiroth, and Ajil tells him that Dr. Hollander has sent Genesis after Dr. Hojo, because he believes Hojo took his rightful place as the head of the science department in Shinra. Genesis has already found Hojo, though, and it is revealed that the reason why Genesis is siding with Hollander is because he believes the doctor can fix the degrading problem. The degrading problem stems from the experiment used to create him. Both Zack and Ajil find him before he gets all stab happy, then Genesis dips and summons freaking Bahamut. And Jill leaves Zack to handle the summoning while he takes on Genesis, but Aerith calls Calls a man and he picks up my guy the mission though it's fine he beats the thing let the man talk to his girl after bahamut's death everyone disappears maybe he would have seen where everyone went if he wasn't on the damn phone so sometime after this was like trying to see his woman sun comes in asking for his help in modeoheim they head over with a bunch of shinra infantrymen and one gets along very well with zack it turns out that this infantryman is no other than our boy cloud strife the revelation that they're both from the ghetto made them bros. The mission progresses as Zack ends up infiltrating a Mako invasion facility, then finds Genesis arguing with Dr. Hollander. Genesis is mad because Hollander isn't keeping his promise of curing his degradation. With the help of Cloud, Zack secures Hollander in 1v1 Genesis. He beats the dude, then Genesis spouts more lines from the epic Loveless. Bro, you've been doing this all game, can you chill? The Genesis falls to his presumed death. Afterwards, Zack runs into Angeal, and Angeal switches up again and challenges Zack to a duel. Dr. Hollander shows up during the duel, then a whole bunch of watch it gets unboxed. Aye, right, so remember when I was telling you how Shinra was doing some fucked up experiments? This is what I was talking about. So there was this race of extremely powerful beings known as Ancients. The Ancients, or Cetra, were chilling on the planet eons ago. What's so special about this race is that they were deeply connected to the planet, meaning that they can guide its spiritual energy. However, this race nearly went extinct because of a bunch of shape-shifting aliens. A bunch of years later, Shinra scientists found remnants of one of the aliens, but mistakenly identified it as an Ancient. So the Shinra scientists heard all the stories about the Ancient, and we're like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we gave ourselves the power to the ancient? This led Shinra to conduct multiple experiments under the Genova project, where they injected humans with Genova cells to try to create a human Cetra hybrid that would lead them to the promised land. So Project G was under the Genova project, and the G actually stands for Jillian, as in Angeal's mom. Dr. Hollander injected Genova cells into Jillian, and then Angeal received the alien's traits from his mother. Genesis was created in the same way. So Jillian killed herself out of guilt for being a part of such a fucked up thing. And as you guys can tell, Angeal and Genesis are done with soldier because of all the fucked up shit Shinra is doing. Really makes you think about who the good guys and bad guys really are. So back to the shit that's going on now, Hollander praises Angeal, calling him the perfect specimen. Out of anger, Angeal then fuses with all of his clones, thus becoming Angeal Penance. Zack is forced to take the self-proclaimed monster down, but before Angeal passes, he bestows onto Zack his buster sword. Now Zack is extremely hurt and frustrated by everything he had to deal with. Luckily, he asks his girl Aerith to comfort him through these hard times. Some time passes, and Zack eventually becomes one of the best at Soldier, with his only real competition being Sephiroth. With Genesis and Angeal defeated, the Genesis War is pretty much over. Dr. Hollander was arrested and everything is pretty much back to normal. But Zack is a little bothered by how things are being run by Shinra. He's under surveillance by the Turks like all the time, and they're basically ignoring everything that happened with Angeal and Genesis. Something ain't right. Shinra sends Zack on vacation with Sisney from the Turks as his guardian. There, Sisney reveals that Aerith is being watched by the Turks because she's the only agent left in the world. Zack didn't know about Aerith's path, but this hit him off guard. His vacation is then put to a halt due to an attack by multiple Genesis clones. Because apparently these things are still alive. Then with the help of Lazard himself, Hollander breaks out of prison. Lazard, why? I thought you were a bro! Zack fails to capture him before Genesis clones rescue him. Then a Watt Sephiroth appears. He tells Zack that the Genesis problem hasn't been solved. Genesis clones have been appearing all over the world, even in Midgar. Then he low-key hints that he should probably check on his girl just in case. Zack heads back to Aerith and finds a monster with white wings protecting her. Because of the white wings, it seems to be a remnant of Angeal. Damn, this man is out here protecting his student from the grave. That's some real shit. With Zack here to protect Aerith, the monster leaves. Then Zack built Aerith a flower wagon to help her with their new flower selling business. Before they're able to take it for a test drive, Zack gets called back to base. Monsters have shown up in Nibelheim and he must accompany Sephiroth to investigate the situation. Before he heads out, he goes to say goodbye to his woman and even stays back to watch her on her first day of business. Then when he dips, he leaves it up to Sun to keep a watchful eye on Aerith. Once Zack makes it back to base, he finds out that his bro Cloud is coming along for the mission. Nibelheim is his hometown after all. When Sephiroth, Zack, and Cloud make it to Nibelheim, Sephiroth reveals that he has no hometown or family. He only knows his mother whose name is Genova, like the alien Genova. 
Yeah, that can't be good. They then meet Tifa, who agrees to guide them through Niwohan. With Tifa's help, they make it to the Mako reactor outside of the village, most likely the reason for this monster uprising. Inside, they find a sealed door with Genova written on it. Along with this, they find a bunch of monsters trapped in tanks. Sephiroth then reveals how members of Soldier are made. They are humans who are enhanced with raw Mako energy. However, these monsters, created by Dr. Hojo, are soldiers who have been infused with massive amounts of Mako. So much so that they morph into monsters. This has Sephiroth question whether he's human or a monster. Then while Sephiroth has a mental breakdown about who or what he is, Genesis shows up and reveals that his mother Genova was a monster. Genova's cells were ejected into a fetus and that fetus was Sephiroth. Now he's part alien. Then after that bombshell, Genesis asks Sephiroth to spare him some cells to stop the degradation, but Sephiroth dubs him. Afterwards, Zack and Cloud reconvene at the end they're staying at and they have a little bro talk. Cloud is all sad about not being a part of Soldier, but Zack tells him that Soldier is like a den of monsters. Then Cloud asks him what happened since he never used to be this pessimistic. Then Zack responds with, Mmm, I don't even know, bro. Like I thought I knew, but now? She's just crazy. A freaking soldier first class lost his mind and now his clones are trying to kill us. Turns out my master was part alien this whole time and I had to kill him because of it. The company I work for is low-key evil and trying to create super soldiers. My freaking girlfriend is the last being in her race. And now this nigga Sephiroth is out here going crazy about Genova and shit. I just want to be a hero, bro. But then Zack gets some soldier squats and gets over it. Going back to Sefi, after Genesis dropped his old backstory at the Mako reactor, he decided to read document after document about this whole Genova project and what it was. Then a few days later, the dude loses it and burns Nibelheim down. Zack then runs to the Mako reactor to face Sephiroth. He finds Sephiroth speaking to Genova about ruling the world. Then they fight, but Zack can't handle the 12 feet of broken that is Sephiroth's sword. Luckily, Cloud comes just in time to finish the job and stab Sephiroth, but Sephiroth's dealt with worse than this, so he's still alive. Then as Cloud comforts an unconscious Tifa, Zack tells him to take down Sephiroth once and for all. But Cloud is a weak-ass infantryman, so Sephiroth swats him away. Get off me, you swine! Then Sephiroth stabs the kid and lifts him up with a sword. But Cloud flips the switch on him and powers through the injury, then throws Sephiroth to make him fall to the depth of the reactor. Cloud falls next to Zack after the whole Sephiroth mess, then Jinder troops collect both of them afterwards. For four years, the two are experimenting on by Dr. Hojo. He exposes them to tons of Mako and injects them with Genova cells. However, Hojo deems them as failures and leaves them be. After the four years, Zack breaks both him and Cloud out of the research facility, but Cloud is incapacitated due to Mako poisoning. So Zack defects from Soldier and decides to take Cloud with him to Midgar so they can get to Aerith. While on the run, he gets caught by Genesis and a bunch of his clones. Bruh, it's been four years! Are you gonna degrade and die or not? Nah? One clone then pulls some of Zack's hair and hopes that the Genova cells will cure the degradation, but the clone turns into a monster instead so Zack kills it. Later, he heads to his hometown of Gungaga, but the Turks are there too. His old friend Sisney gives him an update on his parents, then gives him 10 minutes to escape before the rest of the Turks find him. Thanks for not snitching, bro. Hollander and Genesis then confront Zack, but Hollander states that Zack's cells are useless since he was already enhanced using Mako. However, Cloud never went through Mako infusion, so the cells within him are pure and can help with the degradation. With that, Hollander and Genesis escape with Hollander trying to get to Cloud, but with the help of Lazard, who is now an Angeal clone, they save the kid. Lazar explains that he freed Hollander for his own vengeful purposes, but when he was turned into an Angeal clone, he inherited an Angeal's sense of justice and couldn't help but help Zack. It's like in his DNA now. So with the nudge from Angeal Lazard, Zack discovers that the real Genesis is hiding out in Benora. They go there together and Zack finds Genesis trying to control the power of the live stream. They fight and Zack beats him once again. Then Genesis, who looks like he's been cured of his degradation thanks to the live stream, challenges Zack to another battle, but this time as a soldier. Zack wins again, then returns to Cloud and Angeal Lazard. Unfortunately, the group was attacked by Shinra troops, but luckily that Angeal clone that was protecting Aerith earlier came to help. But the troops were too powerful and now both Angeal Lazard and the Angeal dog thing are dead. Genesis is done being an edgelord serial killer, so that problem is solved. So now all Zack has to do is get to Midgar and see his girl before Shinra catches him. But then he finds Aerith's 89th and final letter to him. That reveals him and Cloud were out of commission for four years. So Aerith is kind of done with him at this point since she has no idea what happened to him. With this, Zack takes Cloud and sets off to Midgar, which stronger determination. Now he needs to get to safety and get his woman back. Together the duo almost make it, but then Shinra troops start busting shots. Zack then lays Cloud on a rock somewhere, then goes to confront the army of infantrymen who are waiting for him. Then in a final stand, he takes down all the infantrymen who oppose him, but gets beaten to death in the process. Cloud finally wakes his ass up, only to find Zack about to die. The former soldier first class then bestows the same buster sword that Angel gave to him onto Cloud, asking the kid to be his living legacy. Then Cloud cries out in frustration, having lost the closest thing he had to a big brother. However, Cloud ain't no bitch, so he accepts Zack's wishes and continues moving forward for him. Which brings an end to the story of Zack Fair, and starts Cloud's story, which we'll get into next week. Let me know in the comments how you feel about Zack's traumatic story. I mean, the guy pretty much lost everything, including his life. But till the very end, he still kept a smile on his face and stayed positive and optimistic. I respect the hell out of that. So with that being said, end screen. I fam, so look. Yes, it is true. The corona 
has, has stolen my job. Because of the corona, I do not have a job. Uh, as you know, a lot of people are losing their jobs. So yeah, right now, my only source, my main source of income is going to be YouTube. I'm gonna actually try it out. I'm gonna try to push forward on YouTube for the month of May and see how well I can do. I'm gonna try to see how far I can go with this. You know, and to do that, I'm going to open up my Patreon again. I'm going to ask for some help from you guys to, to try and make this a thing, to try and see if I, this can be the time where I actually make YouTube my full time thing. So I'm going to open up my Patreon on um, my how the Patreon is going to work like this because I messed up and failed at the last time of doing it. There's only going to be one tier, one dollar. So meaning that you guys can donate however much you want. The starting is one dollar. What I want to do on that Patreon, I'm going to start. It's already it's already up there now, but um, I want to put all my honest gaming history scripts before they come out on there. So like the moment it's done being written, I put it on there so that you can so that you guys can see because there are things that I take out of the script when I actually make the video so that you guys can see like the full full video of how it's supposed to come out and actually see my creative process and stuff like that and i will also just shout out people who have supported me in the list of people that will be on the patreon so if you want to support me on patreon please go ahead and do so like i said one dollar starting you don't have to give more if you don't want to just donate how much you think i'm worth i guess but if you could only give a dollar that's cool if you can't give anything sharing liking subscribing all that good stuff that still helps out you know the deal i'm not i'm not gonna tell you guys to give me money you know like all i'm asking is like if you can donate to patreon pledge do that good shit and yeah i promise you content will come out on patreon and it will actually be worth it it'll be worth giving a dollar i promise you that yeah so uh now i'm gonna get to the actual end screen because this was like just a thing to tell you guys all right actual end screen Yo, thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Honest Gaming History. This one being about Zack Fair. As I said before, this is part of a two-parter where I'm gonna cover Zack. And my God, it is good I do not have a job right now because I don't know how I'd be able to cover that whole story in a week. But now I have so much time to write this script, make it lit, and it's gonna be dope. I will tell you guys this though. Um, I'm going to be using the scenes from the original Final Fantasy VII. If you played Final Fantasy VII Remake, then you know that Cloud Strife is not the same as the Cloud Strife we had in the final in the original Final Fantasy VII. The stories are a little bit different, so doing that story won't make any sense because I don't know what happened. I'm honestly, if you get, like for the people who played Final Fantasy VII Remake, you know after that ending. No one knows what the fuck is gonna happen. So I can't use that. I'm gonna use the original Cloud story and I'm gonna use the original footage from the original Final Fantasy VII. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but yeah, I'm gonna do that. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe if you wanna see more of me. Oh, what else, what else, what else? Comment whoever you wanna see me cover in future episodes of Honest Gaming History. As I said before, my Patreon is in the link below. You can check it out. Uh, donate if you wanna donate, check it out if you want to, all that good stuff. But like I said, you do not have to donate at all. It's fine. Sharing, liking, subscribing, all that stuff still is super helpful. Appreciate you guys for that. With that being said, I am off this. So as usual, be easy, stay lit, take care. And remember, you can do whatever the fuck you wanna do. All it takes is patience, hard work, and time. I feel like I keep on changing that last thing, but they're all true. You need all of them. Just keep on working, people. You will achieve your dreams. I believe in you. All right, peace out. Bye, little rascals. See you later.